Okay, so how many of you guys got your driver's license right when you were 16? Okay, so about half of you. How many of you guys waited until the very end? Until you, or not the very end, sorry. Until you were 18. Okay, well, um, how many of you guys feel confident driving behind the wheel? Okay, that's good. So, um, so I'm here to talk about uh, increasing driving safety. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, some facts about uh, um, injuries and deaths and things like that, and what countries have good uh, crash ratings and are the safest, and um, how graduating driving licenses work, and a personal example at the end. So uh, my claim is uh, creating more challenging driver's license requirements will increase the safety on roads. <coughs> Um, first of all, obviously, um, if you have a lower skill and confidence, it will obviously lead to accidents on your part. Um, the AAA uh, estimates that $166.7 billion is caused, of, that much of damage is caused every year. <coughs> uh, the accidents obviously can hurt you or others and cause injury or death. Uh, there's 3.4 million non-fatal deaths on average uh, every year. Um, and in 2007, 40,000 people died in accidents. Uh, that's a statistic from Bureau of Transportation Statistics. <coughs> now, um, uh, compared to other countries, um, we have a not so great uh, death rate, we have 13.9 deaths per 100,000 people, um, whereas in a country, for example, Finland, has 5.7 deaths per 100,000 people, and in Finland, they have very strict rules on uh, your driver's test, so you have to do lots of hours, like with a driver behind the wheel, in different conditions, in rain and um, snow and ice, and have to do like evasive um, and defensive driving tests. Um, and they have that low crash rate, even despite all their bad weather and ice and things, because of this strict driving, uh, because of this strict driver's license requirement. <coughs> um, and some states now in the United States, uh, to help out with um, accidents and things, uh, have adopted a graduated driving license system. And this uh, restricts people when they're younger, usually around 16, to not uh, be able to drive as many people. Like they can't drive uh, other teenagers and they can't drive past a certain time. It differs between states. In California, it's past 11. Um, but it would also help to, um, if this was, uh, not just for 16-year-olds and young people. It can also benefit people that are older, that are 18 and older, because after that point, it's very, it's a lot easier to get a driver's license. You don't need to go through the graduated driver's license system. And um, a study that North Carolina Highway Safety Research Center did um, stated that 16 to 17-year-olds, uh, 16 to 17-year-olds have 10% lower chance of getting in an accident than five years before when they didn't have a graduated driver's license uh, system. And that definitely helped out on their um, accident rate. Um, lastly, my personal example, uh, I drive all over the place. Um, I've driven probably 10,000 miles since I started school here in the fall. And I feel very confident in my driving and um, I started with the graduated driver's license system. Um, now I have a friend who got his license when he was 18 and uh, has had it now for at least a year and hasn't even driven a thousand miles and feels very like scared behind the wheel and isn't confident at all. Um, he failed his driving test three times and passed it on the fourth. Um, and he wasn't required to do any kind of driver's training or anything like that. He didn't have to go through a permit and have behind the wheel time. 
um, and that really affected how he uh, how he performs behind the wheel. And that's it. Thank you. Could you tell me what the time was on that? Five, okay. All right, Daryl, uh, you, you start off by telling us what the topic area is, and then you sort of dance around what the topic is. You kind of give us a preview, but mostly just by listing what your evidence is going to be about. And then you come in with the claim, which is, seems a little bit of out of character. It's, it's happening later in the process. However, the claim, when it finally does get stated, is relatively clear. The, none of the secondary points, though, are labeled as claims. They're just informational signposts that you're giving us, and I think that's going to be a problem later on because it's not clear what inferences you want us to make. Um, that This is an important issue. I think you do okay providing some de documentation that suggests that this is significant based on the amount of money, the number of lives lost, all that sort of thing. So uh, it's okay to be talking about. The example that you start with where you're talking about the different laws in Finland versus the United States, I think that's that's a good idea. Uh, I don't really get a source citation for any of the explanation about what the Finnish laws and procedures are. We're mostly having to take you at your word for it. And I didn't hear any expert attribute the significantly lower rate of um, deaths or accidents per 100,000 to the Finnish licensing procedure. That's mostly your inference there. And I'm not saying that it's automatically a bad inference, but it would seem like you would want uh, stronger evidence if you're going to show that increased restrictions work. Now, the one place that you do have information that shows that increased restrictions work is on the graduated driver's licenses in those places where they've adopted them, how they've had uh, success at reducing the percentage of drivers, especially at young age who are involved in accents. And I think you do a pretty good job at that. Uh, I'm not sure, you mentioned California, of course, has a GDL. Uh, I'm not sure how widespread GDLs are based on the presentation that you give. If we already have them, then I'm not sure that you've shown that additional restrictions would be effective. Now, I think if you showed that GDLs, if they were more widely adopted, would probably reduce uh, accidents and, and deaths and those sorts of things, I think then you would have a stronger argument to make. And that's one of the problems, like I said, because the secondary points are just labeled as information rather than claims, that it's hard to make the inferences that you want us to make. Um, and that's a problem in several spots where you don't really seem to be making inferences, you're just telling us information. And remember, an argument requires that you go beyond the information and make a claim based on that information. I think your exit needs to summarize a little bit more and it needs to be a little bit cleaner as well. All right, thank you.